welcome to one medicine today i'll be discussing about bowen's disease so bowen's disease is a form of intraepidermal squamous cell carcinoma so it is a squamous cell carcinoma in situ it was first described by john t bowen in 1912 so here we see persistent non elevated red scaly or crusted plaque with a small potential for invasive malignancy so here we see a scaly red colored lesion the lesion is a plaque so scaly red colored crusted plaque we see that's the lesion here you see in bowen's disease and there is a small tendency to uh, go into an invasive malignancy so this bowen's disease is also called as bowenoid keratosis or it is called intra epithelial carcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma in situ so these are the synonyms of bowen's disease so it can affect any age but since it's a carcinoma more commonly the elderly people that is above 60 years of age is uh, what is affected so this age group 60 to 80 years is what is uh, said to be the most common age group that it affects and females are more commonly affected than males here ethnicity whites with increased sun exposure so they are more prone for getting bowen's disease the causative organisms here is um, human papilloma virus type 16 and 18 are uh, involved in the pathogenesis of bowen's disease and also uh, uv exposure plays an important role uv radiation again uh, is involved in pathogenesis certain other factors is um, the arsenic exposure either uh, medis medical or uh, occupational exposure or immunosuppression ionizing radiation increases the chances of getting uh, bowen's disease okay so it can be uv exposure it can be arsenic exposure immunosuppression ionizing radiation will other risk factors for getting Bowen's disease. So causes is chronic UV radiation. Lesions are mostly seen on the sun exposed sites, head and neck region. That's why we say that uh, UV exposure plays a part in developing Bowen's disease. UV induced mutation of the tumor suppressor gene P53 is also seen. So this tumor suppressor gene, this gene will suppress the tumor growth. So if this gene is mutated, there's increased chances of tumor growth. So that is seen in Bowen's disease. Even arsenic exposure, as I told you before, the exposure to arsenic can be from either medicines or water or industrial exposure um, and lesions could occur on the covered sites as well okay so that tells you that arsenic exposure can also lead to Bowen's disease and human papillomavirus you have many types uh, we have 8 16 18 39 51 types with genital Bowen's disease and with extremities we have 15 and 16 which are associated then other genetic factors are involved here then we have trauma, chronic irritation, chemical carcinogens, tobacco exposure, x-ray, thermal injury, immunosuppression, organ transplant patients. So there are n number of causes which can cause this but mainly we have UV rays, the HPV and arsenic exposure. Okay, These are the most important uh, causes for causing Bowen's disease. These are the causes of Bowen's disease. Next, coming to the clinical features, there can be a solitary, that is a single or multiple lesions here, okay. The site as it is uh, uh, more commonly seen in people who are exposed more to UV radiation, we have the exposed sites which are more commonly involved here, head and neck are the more commonly affected sites. Other sites can be, it can be perianal skin, subungual region, palms and oral mucosa can also be affected. So the lesions that we see here are small red scaly lesion which will enlarge in an irregular fashion. So there will be a red scaly lesion and that will enlarge in an irregular fashion. Okay. So after the scale is detached, when you take out the scale, moist red granular surface is seen without any bleeding. Okay. So there's this moist red granular surface when you take out the scaling present on this lesion. It has the scales. When you take out the scale, that glistening surface would be present. Okay. And it's a well demarcated margin and slightly raised. So if there is ulceration present, that will indicate that it is going into malignancy, invasive malignancy. Clinical variants on the perianal skin, if the lesion is present, it has increased chances of invasion. Recurrence would be more if it is present on the perianal skin. And along with that lesion, there can be associated cervical and valval dysplasia also. So there can be involvement of other uh, sites surrounding neighboring sites also. So, if the nail unit is involved, mostly it is because of HPV-16. It's another variant called pigmented Bowen's disease which affects the flexural area, perineal area and subungual areas. We have another variant called varicose Bowen's disease wherein it's a keratotic, um, there will be varicose lesions present. And we have Bowen's disease of the gland spinous which is otherwise called as erythroplasia of curette. Okay? So, the variants would be pigmented type, varicose type and if it's present in the gland spinous, it is given another name called erythroplasia of curette. Okay, so this is the lesion of the Bowen's disease. Here you can see red scaly lesion. 
mild scaling is also present over that particular region right so that's how a bowen's disease uh, looks like here is another photo this is a solid here only two lesions are seen here here again multiple areas of bowen's disease you can see on the lower leg that is okay so those are the lesions of the bowen's disease then here the periangual lesion you can see as i told you it is hpv 16 which is involved in periangual lesions this is another lesion again on the periangual side present okay red scaly lesion for a long time in an elderly patient okay then you'll have to think about this biopsy again will prove the diagnosis so again here you can see there's this um, erythematous scaly plaque present uh, over the left temporal area this is so this is the very uh, scaly you can see the scaling here a little bit varicose okay here again on the uh, suprapubic area you can see erythematous ulcerated plaque present so if ulceration present there's this increased chances of invasion here you can see on the chest there's this uh, lesion bowen's disease along with epidermodysplasia verusiformis bowen's disease plus there is epidermodysplasia verusiformis so these two lesions are on the background you can see versicolor like lesions that is basically erythro epidermodysplasia verusiformis and that is mostly seen in hiv patients immunocompromised patients we see this okay so histopathology of Bowen's disease, here there will be a full thickness epidermal dysplasia. The whole thickness of the epidermis will be dysplasia with an intact basement membrane. So there will be disordered differentiation of the keratinocytes present in the epidermis. There is loss of epithelial polarity. There is something called as wind blown appearance which is seen here. Okay, So there will be distorted keratinocytes in the uh, particular epidermis. That's why it's called wind blown. As if the wind is blown and the the epidermis is distorted like that it will uh, be seen and then along with that there's parakeratosis acanthosis hyperkeratosis these keratinocytes of the epidermis will show pleomorphism nuclear hyperchromatism nuclear enlargement there are sometimes clear cells with are pas positive that is periodic acid positive um, and papillary dermis uh, in the epidermis these are the changes whereas in the dermis there will be inflammatory infiltrate present okay these are the changes that you can see and um, the variants of uh, Bowen's disease would be depending upon the clinically how it presents or depending upon the histology it can be psoriasiform type so psoriasis also presents with scaling right erythematous plaques with scaling so it can be psoriasiform type of Bowen's disease atrophic type varicose type irregular type and papillator type can be present so this is a lesion of uh, histopathology of Bowen's disease here you can see that there is loss of polarity pesadly arranged keratinocytes and uh, atypical mitosis and few giant cells also you can see mitosis is increased so these are the features there will be full thickness epidermal dysplasia but with an intact base membrane along with that there is vacuolization of the basal cells mitosis dyskeratotic cells multinucleate cells would be present giant cells would be present wind blown appearance formed by this atypical keratinocytes who have lost the polarity and large keratinocytes with pale ground glass cytoplasm would be present they are called spagetoid cells okay and the extension of these keratinocytes uh, down in the follicular epithelium and acrosyringium also seen so down the sweat glands or the hair follicles the keratinocytes which are atypical will extend and the dermis will show moderate lymphocytic infiltrate here in the lower part of the epidermis which shows large number of atypical keratinocytes so the atypical keratinocytes are present here okay that's a case of Bowen's disease if there's a doubt in diagnosis by just looking at the lesion clinically if you have doubts then histopathology is a must biopsy of the lesion will tell us about the diagnosis most important features are this full thickness epidermal dysplasia keratinocytes which have lost the polarity the wind blown appearance pegetoid cells giant cells with only minimum inflammatory infiltrate in the derm upper dermis and um, both acrosyringium acrotrichium would be involved that is the hair follicle and the sweat glands would be involved here okay the atypical cells will extend down there also so those are the features in histopathology which are the catching points to diagnose Bowen's disease if they occur on the gland spinous it is called erythroplasia of curette here again uh, another photo of histopathology of Bowen's disease where an epidermis is irregularly thickened here the ultra structure is lost here that's why it's called wind blown appearance and uh, throughout the epidermis here you can see this array of cells with atypical mitosis also present this is a dermoscopical feature of Bowen's disease so the dermoscopy you see irregular erythematous base 
this is this irregular erythematous base along with mild scaling which is seen as mild hyperkeratosis which is present along with that we see variable uh, vascular structures being present right vascular structures are present that's why they're reddish in color so these are the three features that you see in dermoscopy so irregular erythematous base mild hyperkeratosis vascular structure so this is the mild hyperkeratosis present here and vascular spaces you can see the pinpoint erythematous lesions here right so this is the dermoscopically how it looks like so next what are the differential diagnosis of bowen's disease you have different variants and those have different uh, differential diagnosis if it is erythematous you can differentiate it from superficial basal cell carcinoma eczema psoriasis seborrheic dermatitis lichen planus uh, benign lichenoid keratosis actinic keratosis squamous cell carcinoma amelanotic melanoma if it is hyperkeratotic type differentiated from verruca vulgaris that is um, warts viral warts seborrheic keratosis dle hypertrophic lp squamous cell carcinoma if it is the pigmented variety you have to differentiate it from again melanoma would be pigmented bavanoid papillosis sometimes would be pigmented then um, interterigenous bavanoid disease which is present in the flexures you have to differentiate it from inverse psoriasis seborrheic dermatitis candidiasis paget's disease and haley haley disease if it is the subungual variety or the periungual variety differentiate it from nail dystrophy or nicomycosis squamous cell carcinoma a melanotic melanoma so there are many differential diagnoses which have to be considered before diagnosing it as bowen's disease again histopathologically pejet's disease pejetoid because here you see pejetoid cells which are large keratinocytes with pale cytoplasm they are present here so pejet's disease pejetoid cells you have to differentiate intraepidermal eccrine carcinoma intraepidermal merkel cell carcinoma intraepidermal sebaceous carcinoma bavanoid papillosis hydrocanthoma simplex podophyllin induced changes in a ward so all of that are the differential diagnosis this is a superficial uh, basal cell carcinoma which is mimicking bavanoid disease so this is a discoid eczema of the leg which again looks like bavanoid disease this is psoriasis on the leg with scaling which looks like bowen's disease and here is a squamous cell carcinoma with hyperkeratosis which will mimic bowen's disease here again you have lesions which mimic bowen's disease this is uh, uh, treated with 5% temecumod and post treatment the lesions have reduced here okay this was a case of bavanoid papillosis not bowen's disease okay bavanoid papillosis which was treated with the 5% imicumod cream management of bowen's disease is first line therapy would be cryotherapy with liquid nitrogen curettage uh, if cryotherapy cannot be done curettage can be done risk of ulceration long term topical therapy would be present five fluorouracil odo bd once or twice daily application can be used for 3 to 4 weeks photodynamic therapy second line therapy would be radiotherapy surgical excision with a 4 mm margin that is most micrographic surgery with a 4 mm margin has to be done okay third line therapy would be topical diclofenac 3% in 2.5% hyaluron gel phenol peel 0.1% azarotin gel oral acetate so firstly it would be the curettage of the cryotherapy that has to be done so here was a patient who was treated with uh, this is the lesion of the bowen's disease this is the dermoscopic feature and he was treated with uh, liquid nitrogen therapy okay liquid nitrogen was used and this is immediately after liquid nitrogen therapy with inflammation present here okay but this is the post uh, treatment picture and this is after 6 weeks the lesion has reduced okay so that's how it looks like it's a chronic course uh, disease with uh, single or multiple lesions uh, which develop over a period of time but excellent prognosis seen except in uh, if there's no squamous cell carcinoma or transformation then it has got excellent prognosis Uh, other uv induced skin malignant and pre malignant lesions development can be seen in the lifetime of the patient and careful follow up and monitoring for those have to be done so this is about bowen's disease thank you